This week, we've got right angle, drills, X-lock, grinders, crazy build techniques from the Swiss, a baby chainsaw adapter, and more. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. Today's episode is brought to you by Skill, the tools to do the job, technology to do it better. And Spider Pro Power Tools. Glad to have you back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob, and we're starting this week with none other than Stanley the Dirt Monkey himself. Stan was at the Milwaukee Pipeline Outdoor Power event last week, and while a lot of our favorite channels attended, only Stan would interrupt a Milwaukee presentation and demand that he be the one to run the competitor's tool in a head-to-head. -head. Can we get a non-Milwaukee guy to run that gas-powered saw? Hey, step up, Stanley! <laughs> Now we've covered all the new Milwaukee tools already, but honestly, there's no one I'd rather watch at an event like this than Stan, specifically when he's playing with OPE, which of course is the world he was born into. Even if you've already seen the new Milwaukee stuff, I suggest you watch the event on Stanley Dirt Monkey Genetic. Jim Davis tricked me into watching a Harbor Freight tool review this week, and I'm not even mad. Apparently, Harbor Freight is launching two new high torque impact wrenches under the Hercules brand, and Jim was, I, fortunate, I guess, to get them first. And to truly put these guys to the test, he had to build an all new testing rig, which included some welding. And of course you can't test the nut busting torque on an impact wrench without some nuts to bust, which Jim set up on his new rig with the help of a five foot iron pipe over his breaker bar. That's actually pretty genius. Jim then proceeded to put each of the impacts through a few tests and finally pops them both open to give us an incredibly detailed look at the insides. I'm not a big hardly great fan, but I have to be honest, Jim's review was so detailed and easy to watch, I enjoyed it anyways. Holly suggests you visit Philly Fix to see for yourself. Speaking of Rockstar Tool Reviewers, Todd decided this was the week to test right angle drills, which means this is the week I have to buy one. Man, this guy's ruining my kid's college fund. His testing included a $50 Costway all the way up to a $160 Makita with a DeWalt Rigid Milwaukee Metabo HPT Cobalt and Ryobi One Plus HP filling in the gaps. He tests speed, torque, and the usual ergonomic specs. But probably the most entertaining was this torture test where he used each drill to turn a lawnmower engine with no spark plug and the brake applied, which provided a constant 33 inch pound load. The goal was to keep it spinning for two minutes and only four of the tools were able to do it. And some of them simply don't like this test, but you will, I promise. For the full review and to find out which right angle drill Todd says you should buy, head over to Project Farm. Makita's been trying hard to convince us that their 18 volt LXT and their 40 volt XGT lines are both relevant. But no matter how convinced I am, not everyone is. Enter Taylor at Tinker with Tools, who decided he wanted to find out for himself. Now the brothers being tested are the Makita LXT XPH14Z and the Makita XGT GPH01D, which on paper beats its little brother by 500 RPM, but features the exact same 1250 inch pounds of torque. To measure the marginal benefits between the two, he drove several SPACs, five inch lag bolts, and timber locks up to eight inches. And of course, the obligatory spade bit, a huge one inch spider boring bit, which wasn't boring at all. Spider and even a one and three quarter inch Irwin speed bore. And while it wasn't a surprise to see the XGT outperform the LXT, the shocker was how it measured up to all the other drills he's tested so far. As he put it himself, not only was this the fastest drill he's ever tested, but it was 35% faster than the second place contender from Flex, causing him to call this the best drill on the market today. Is he nuts? Mm, probably. But you really should decide for yourself and visit Tinker with Tools. Speaking of Makita's XGT awesomeness, the unofficial ambassador of Makita itself, Tools and Stuff, got a hold of their new X-Lock grinders to see if they're worth his Kiwi coins. If you're not familiar, the X-Lock system for angle grinders was developed originally by Bosch and offered as a standard to other tool manufacturers. And it's been picked up by 40 different companies when I last looked, including some you've heard of like Diablo, Makita, and well, that's it. But if you've ever used X-Lock before, you'll likely wish everyone else would get on board too. Fortunately for Makita fans, they launched two new angle grinders that take advantage of the ultra fast switching feature at the core of the X-Lock system. Now I've used it myself and trust me, being able to swap out disc on your angle grinder with no tools and in a fraction of a second is really useful. And in this case, this awesome feature just happens to be on a pair of awesome angle grinders from Makita. They're available with either a slider switch or a paddle switch as God intended. 
Tools spend 20 minutes testing all of the grinders together and takes his time reviewing the X-Lock feature itself. If you're on the fence, I suggest you head over to Tools and Stuff. Now, if you're new to the channel, I normally host this show with my co-host Sarah, who happens to be on vacation this week. She also happens to be obsessed with baby chainsaws. So of course, this is the week that Dave decides to review the craziest baby chainsaw I've ever seen. That is the Way Toll 4-inch chainsaw drill attachment. That's right, it's a 4-inch chainsaw powered by your drill. And at only $21, I don't think any of us were expecting much. And while I don't want to spoil the video, I will tell you this, it cuts which quite frankly was a nice surprise. Dave put it through a variety of logs and materials and yeah, it freaking cuts. I have no idea how long this thing would last, assuming you keep it properly oiled, but for 21 bucks, you can almost buy a pack of 10 and use them as disposable chainsaws. So is this a good purchase? Nah, I don't see Sarah getting one, but in a pinch, it might actually make sense for some of you. To find out if you're one of them, head over to Man Caver Tools. Now our buddy Mark Thomas was rummaging through his old tools and found this. That is a Milwaukee Magnum hole shooter that he bought at a builder square. Remember those kids? No, no you don't. Most people would either toss or ignore the tool when they find it, but fortunately for us, Mark decided to test it against the new Milwaukee Gen 4. Now you can guess how that goes. Unfortunately, this is just a short, but I wanted to encourage Mark to produce a full head-to-head -head video between these tools. If you'd like to see that too, head over to a short and ask for it in the comments. Sarah and I were fortunate to get invited by Hilti to visit Switzerland last year to see their new Neuron line of tools, and the country left both of us absolutely stunned. But we didn't have much time to look around. Yet our buddy Kyle from RR Buildings is there this week, and he's been sharing a ton of videos you won't want to miss, including a fascinating tour of a construction site where he details a ton of building techniques we simply don't use here in the States. He's using the trip to visit a ton of really interesting companies, and the series easily worth a watch. Do you guys use a lot of battery powered heat guns? Yeah, me neither. But after this next video, I'm headed to the store. Tim Johnson got a hold of the rigid R86435 18 volt heat gun, which reaches a very useful 900 degrees, and Tim thinks you should have one. Tim reviews its features, teaches us to use it properly, and then proceeds to use it to fix like 30 problems I didn't realize I had. A heat gun can be super useful in your shop, but Tim makes a good case to simply have one around the home as well. If you don't have one yet, head over to Shop Tool Reviews for a better look. Last of all today, our buddy Alan, better known on YouTube as the Lawn Care Nut, has been spreading the good news of lawn care for many years now. But this week, he teamed up with Ego to do a bit of good by getting some much needed OPE and extra cash to some people in need. Alan's travels brought him to his hometown in Indiana, where he was working with a local landscaper to try out some different types of weed control. But while he was in town, he also started asking around to see if he could find someone who could use a bit of help. And that search led to the St. Jude house. The good folks there helped Alan find a woman and her family who have been recovering from domestic abuse. Alan not only helps a small family with a full set of ego tools for their lawn, he also gives them thousands of dollars in support all thanks to the partnership between his lawn care company, Yard Mastery, and Ego. Their story is very powerful and worth the watch. And it's pretty awesome to see what a lawn care company and a power tool juggernaut like Ego can do when they come together and do something kind for somebody else. And you can watch the full story at The Lawn Care Nut. All right, so we're a little over halfway through the month and I'm still working on filling our prize shelf. Every month, we randomly choose a channel member who gets to pick from one of four prize shelves, each with over $2,000 worth of power tools. And since there's no point having pro tools without pro accessories, Spider stocks each shelf with their full line of pro accessories as well. If you'd like to be a part of our production crew program, look for the join button next to the subscribe button to learn more. Sarah, please come back safely with your family. You're sorely missed. I want to thank Spider and Skill for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. Now, if you can, do something kind for someone else this weekend, and I'll see you next week.